Hello, coming on down. You know the deal now. Try not to sit on the wet paint. Hello, Charlotte here. In a live, real-time painting kind of way. And you know what? It's, it's the same day. This is the third part and with wet paint on the same day. And I have been thinking so much about this painting and this journey with you and what the point of it is. And I'm always talking about monitoring, noticing our reactions. And if anything feels jarring or we get a negative reaction or a little uh, inside, to question it or to pause, to take time to pause and work out where that negative reaction is coming from, what it is that we're carrying with us that is being triggered by that reaction. So, right, if you've been following this particular journey, I'll get to the reaction in a second, because it's key for this particular journey, has this painting has transformed massively at a, a fast rate, actually, from the first version, which was the other way up, and it was bright yellows and oranges, and it turned into a forest. And I explained in, and I was trying out new techniques for myself on this loose canvas, folding it and playing with the paint in a very different way. And, and then I explained as I started the second part when I turned the canvas upside down and I felt like I wanted it to become more open hills and that I was no longer in the forest and I went out for a walk and I mean literally went out for a walk and I was thinking about the these two versions of the same painting and what they meant and I, I was really quite excited by the fact and I was consciously aware of it in the second video where I, I said that the, you know, the old Charlotte was trapped in the forest or encountering the forest. And, and now like new Charlotte has this beautiful open vista where I see, I can see there's no obstacles in the way. The light is different. The colors are different. It's a different story. So it's almost like I'm giving you or showing myself as well, like a, a flip book of my of my life um, sped up really quickly with the 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 bright yellows and the oranges and the forest and then the open landscape and what I realized as I was going through the forest today the literal forest and the, the sunshine was there and the trees were there and I go to the forest I walk in the forest every day even if it's raining and I thought it was as if the trees that I painted were the trees that I encounter every day. And maybe you think of trees as, as beings or ancestors. They certainly carry wonderful energy. I've always loved being around trees. And it was, for me, it was as if the story of today was that the trees were saying, but you walk amongst us every day. You don't need to tell that story anymore. What you want to tell the story of is the opening of your imagination and the letting go of judgment. And that is why the painting has transformed into this, this development of a completely new vista. And and I was really pleased with that. I thought, yes, this is this is the imagine my imagination opening up and the key for me from waking up in the middle of the night and thinking about this last night was the sharing of this journey with you and um and hopefully encouraging you by my example to to experiment to push a little bit and and have more confidence in in shedding those judgmental voices and then you know what happened I was showing my partner Pete the two photographs because he's, you know, aware of, of what I'm doing. Uh, we're in the same house, <laughs> and um, and he he looked at the two photographs of before and after, and and he, you know, when someone just has one of those faces where it's like, hmm, 
and they don't say anything and you, you have this like <laughs> rising up inside of but well, what do you mean you got no comment and <laughs> and what it did was it triggered a defensive reaction in me and I can dispel these very very quickly these days I've become a dab hand nay an expert <laughs> at recognizing the irritated defensive voices that come up within me and being able to tell very very quickly because this is the work that I've been doing the internal work I've been doing for years understanding where where that is coming from why what to do about it so I recognized that I was feeling defensive because I wanted him to say oh that that's awesome the second version you've done is great and yeah I can see where you're going with it and well done what a fantastic video to share but he didn't because and this is where I also had the irritation because I knew that he was reflecting what I my intention was at the start he knew that my intention had been to to experiment with something completely new for me even if it's not totally new for art the art world for me to do something new for myself and to share the experimentation process with you and he said yes yeah absolutely you've done forests before well done he said but you've also this what's happening here is the process and the background layering of what I do these days my landscape stories the odyssey stories that I tell the journey paintings this is turning into one of those and I was looking at a photograph of this because it's really hard to get perspective when it's on the floor and it's quite a big canvas so I was looking at a photograph and I was already getting excited about turning this section up here into a lake with reflections and because I could start to see that this looked like it could be an area of water and there's the shore on the other side and and I was planning in my head very consciously how to turn this into one of my landscapes and I even mentioned I remembered saying in one of the videos about this process that it was that I'm best known at the moment for my odyssey landscapes and the fairy tale stories and these imagined landscapes that i do and i've just finished filming for you guys a um i'm just looking at it over there a um semi-abstract landscape with hills and a valley which is very much in my style and i filmed that in real time start to finish because i really wanted to share that process but I know how to do that. And what is now happening on this is that I am changing this painting to, to and turn it into something that I already know how to do. And that was not the point. At any stage, I can decide, right, this canvas is going to be used for one of my landscape journeys. And there are so many beautiful colours on here. I really, really like the colours. I love some of the story that's happening. But that is not the point of this painting. And, and Pete said, eh, just whitewash over it and start again. And I thought, I don't actually want to whitewash over it because there are some elements here which are, which still, I still think are absolutely gorgeous. But I've said to you on previous videos, don't be afraid to paint over stuff to almost erase what you've done. Nothing is wasted. And what I realise the third part of this story is, it's me working through these different stages. I needed to know, I needed to see that I'm no longer in the forest metaphorically speaking i've emerged from the forest i'm now in a much more open vista and this journey of painting stages has clearly displayed that for you as well so it, not only am i trying to demonstrate a 
a letting go of judgment and having a play with the paint. But it's also been a very clear illustration of how far I've come with these this series. And I, I'm saying that for myself. I'm not saying that. Oh, look at what, how well I've done. That is for me to hear. But this is now getting into really comfortable territory. And I know that I can now manoeuvre this into something interesting and potentially saleable, which would be nice. But what I don't know is what, what I can, I still don't quite know what I'm able to do with paint when I remove any kind of sense of of purpose with the canvas beyond having a play. So the really early stages of the painting, when I look back, when I watched back the very first video, you know, the really early stages just with the yellow and the orange, have I ever just left a painting at that? No, I haven't. I've always, because I'm so fascinated by the the material, by the textural effects, by the colour, I can't help myself. I want to push, I want to discover what happens, I want to tell these stories, but the story I haven't yet told is what does Charlotte do when she throws all of that out the window and still has, you know, one, if I make myself quite uncomfortable with <laughs> pushing, pushing and seeing, for fear of judgment and the story is is that how can i now use this canvas and not worry about any of these what's going to happen to any of this because this is the story this is the story that i we are sharing this is the story we're sharing and what i have there <laughs> at the top of the canvas and um, let's just see what happens. I have a large tub of white gesso and I have a tub of black gesso. Now, I've joked about this before and any of my students and anyone who's ever worked with me creatively knows that ready mix black paint is banned from my classes because you can mix your own black with the primary colours and you can control it to exactly the tone of black that you want. And I want to encourage people to learn how to mix colors. So we never use ready mixed black. So for me to get that out and, and just have white and black when I am all about color, I mean, forget about my white and black studio outfit. That's so the painting sings. Um, this is quite uncomfortable territory for me. And maybe what's going to happen over the next few minutes is simply a, a brave decision to cover up most of this and just leave it and just walk away. And then to work out what I'm going to do with it at a later date. But these this triptych of videos of showing myself, showing you that sometimes pushing yourself can feel, it can feel so uncomfortable that we automatically look for the, what we're used to. And even though it felt like at the outset, I was doing really different, brave things with the paint, I was swaying it into my comfort zone. And what I want to try and unlock or allow out is something different in me. So at every and what I what I know what's going to happen is that I will look back through the photographs of the different stages of this and probably think at different times, oh the first one looked amazing with the the, the stark forest against the yellow. Why didn't I leave it at that? And then I think, why didn't I do something with this? Well, I can at any point. I can whitewash the entire canvas and start again, or I can bring out sections of this. But what I know 
to be true because of the defensive negative reaction I had when my partner just went, hmm, um, <laughs> my excitement. I wanted a medal and I wanted a big compliment and I didn't get it. And so I got all uppity. And it's, it's, rec- it's understanding where those reactions come from and why. And we, can, we are the only people who have control over our actions and reactions. So rather than me getting in a huff with him about, well, why do you like my painting? He has a really good point. He knew what that my intention was and I have not yet fulfilled it. So with that said, with that said, I'm just going to check that you've still got a good view of the painting. Yep. Right. Okay. So let's see. Let's see what happens when I simply pour some white (laughs) over the canvas. Okay. So let's start with, well, that's not going to do it, is it? That's not going to do it. We actually, we're going to need to do, we're going to need to do a pour, right? Okay. Let off. (laughs) Oh my goodness me. Right. Well, there's definitely no going back now. And I was all excited about the, um, the wobbling of the canvas at the early stages. Now I just need to get that onto, here we go. Right. Now the paint underneath is still wet. So this is is not going to be a pure. Oh, that's made so. Can you hear that zing zing? That makes a lovely noise. <laughs> Musical. Uh, where's my water? My water's there. And some black. Right. Let's just let's just have. Right. Let's just have a circle of black. Now maybe my challenge is to. <laughs> almost leave it like that and see what happens but first of all okay right right what happens if we fold it over like that oh that's interesting and let's do that again because that's the whole point of having this canvas so we're getting like butterfly prints in both directions so that is something I would never have done put black and white over the top of of a painting and then use the canvas that's making quite an interesting pattern though all right come on let's really squash that out because i can't do this on a on a standard canvas oh you know what it is it's a raw shack isn't it you know one of those uh um psychology psychological psychology one of those images you look at and you say what can you see and everybody sees butterflies or women with their legs spread whatever whatever it is they're supposed to notice so instantly right we are in like major uncomfort zone here because this is so different to what I would normally do and there's a huge blob of white in the middle because I mean I poured a hefty quantity didn't I and I can still see a fair bit of the rest of the the painting but (laughs) my hand is is really wanting to go in that so you know I'm just I'm gonna have to do it oh god that feels lovely oh that is so nice it really is like playing with um ice cream Right. So now this is the point where, you know, you always worry that if somebody comes in, they think you're having an actual breakdown. (laughs) Maybe that's a really good sign. So I'm going to try and cover up. So I'm consciously sort of covering up what I did before, but it's, God, that's thick paint. That is, that is fantastic. So getting rid of the Rorschach because that just was too... Um, it it told too clear a story for me. It was such an obvious, you know, symmetry. Right now, creating, I have absolutely no idea what, but this is, you know, what's really good. 
this is making me feel a little bit uncomfortable and there's <laughs> this is absolutely brilliant i really do feel like um a child uh trying something out tentatively for the first time and the adults have left the room and you're kind of on your own with the 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 nutella <laughs> And the peanut butter and you're wondering like, what you're going to do. That's, that's really quite nice. Right, so getting rid of some of that. I think it's fair to say that I have never done anything which is grey, let alone just, you know, made that much mess and put that much paint on there. So I'm, I'm feeling distinctly out of my comfort zone, which is exactly what I wanted, ironically. Now, just... What's going to happen? Now, where's that canvas right over there, which has some of my old paint on? Now, what happens if I just do that? Oh, so well, that is in itself. I mean, maybe that is what's going to come out of it. That's that's really interesting. Right. So there we go. Oh, yeah, that is really interesting. I need some way to do the state of this. This is quite remarkable. Help, I need to go and get a cloth. Here. Right, I don't think this is going to do anything. This cloth is going to be saturated in, in just a minute. But I feel like there might be some interesting story happening underneath with the grey. But is this just me having a little panic with the amount of paint that's on here? And what I need is a huge, another huge piece of canvas that I can, can dip this paint in. I haven't got any. I haven't got any prepared. All right. Well, goodbye to that lovely horizon line. So if you're living vicariously through my experience and really pleased that you're not doing this, I'm extremely happy to be of service. But the whole point is trying in the creative world. You know, this is where these canvases are where we get to explore different versions of ourselves and try something totally new. I mean, that is actually quite interesting, that in the middle. This is almost becoming um, safe in that I'm really used to doing layers of painting, although I'm just making completely um, symmetrical lines. Maybe this is going to be, that it's gonna completely change view and be from this angle Maybe I need to put in um, some white over the top when it's when it's dry. Uh, whatever's happening, I have a very, very grey hand. Maybe, maybe I need to do something like, oh, you know, but that when I stand up and look at it, I mean, this is, it's, it's a, it's a something with lots of paint on it and, and you can tell this is this is this is new horizon for me now what happens what happens if okay go cool, i'm gonna burn through this gesso right let's just get a little bit more of this flicked over here just because because i feel like it was starting to get a bit too messy uh messy a bit too neat and you know what this is this is brilliant because it reminds me of um well i've told this story in one of my videos before that for the longest time i actually thought that um people who did abstract paintings only did them because they didn't know how to draw or paint properly and I use that loosely I mean paint realistically they didn't know how to draw and so they resorted to abstraction and now I understand 
how challenging, not just right now, I mean, ever since I've done abstract paintings or abstract backgrounds, I understand how wrong that is because it's completely, um, oh yeah, so from having an awful lot of paint on, on there, I've now got even more paint on there. When, when do I ever use black gesso other than experiments like this? When I started doing my own abstract experiments, I realised that this is the hardest art form because there aren't rules beyond your own aesthetic um, ideas or colour mixing and wanting to keep things um, of, of a certain palette. But there, because there aren't specific rules, it makes it really, really hard to do because you've got to trust your own judgment or your creative eye. And, you know, if you're painting a portrait, it looks like the person or it doesn't. So what happens if I do that and then roll it? Oh, <laughs> we really are making a mess. This is brilliant. OK. And this is going to take an entire week to dry. And anybody who comes to the studio is going to be wondering whether I have actually had a midlife crisis. And how fantastic is that? You know, I'm completely changing my own creative language here with this. And it will probably be that... This needs to now sit for however long for this paint to dry and maybe I'll scrape into it, scratch into it over the next week and maybe I will completely paint over it again and just start with a, with a blank white canvas. But this is something I haven't done before and I certainly haven't done it with anybody watching. So what a... What a privilege for me to be in a situation where I can push myself to this extent and put myself right out of my comfort zone and, and just see what might happen, even if it doesn't work, even if, it, if it's a complete creative failure. Nothing is going to be wasted because it's part of the learning journey of working out well what actually feels right for me what what gets me excited and what gives interesting results and it probably won't be this but I've never done this before so I wouldn't know until now right well now I've done it now I've gone and done it What happens with that, with that really wet black? Ooh, now, now we're getting some, actually some really interesting uh, textures over the top. <laughs> This is actually now, this is giving me a lot of pleasure because it's so, so totally out of the norm and so brilliantly un-Charlotte, grey and completely mucky. Oh my goodness. So... <laughs> I'm going to leave this to dry for the next week. Oh, hang on. What is that sudden voice, that urge inside of my head? I haven't used any blue either. And I just want to do that with a cobalt. And that. Okay. Yeah, I didn't use any blue. I just do a little bit of that. Sometimes... You don't really know why you have a, an urge to do something. And even if I put, because there's a huge like lake of water in the middle of this and an amazing amount of 
paint on there. Yeah, that is an incredible amount of paint. Oh, a nice colour on there. Amazing amount of paint. I feel like I do feel like a child again playing in the mud and it feels quite unnatural even though everything I do has an element of play. This is pushing myself in such a, a new direction that but I can see little areas like that white over there which is really quite interesting. So maybe the introduction of some more areas of white, maybe if I scrape away a little bit more, some just some of these areas, expose a bit of brightness. Maybe that will, perhaps there's a little bit of story to happen. Shame to waste all that paint, let's put it down there. Just having a little play. So what is it that you're taking from this? You know, you're watching somebody else really <laughs> go to an extreme to ruin what they've, the potential of a, of a painting. Because that is, that is exactly what I've done. I've pushed this to the point of... Um, almost certain fail I, and in doing so you never know what beauty and adventure you're going to uncover on the way you never know until you've done it so the lesson for me you know I might even scrape quite a lot of this gray paint off put it in another tub so I've got a whole heap of gray and Actually, that's quite a nice idea that there's there's going to be a very, very different story underneath here. Yeah, I quite like the idea of removing a fair bit of this in some sections and seeing what's happening underneath. But is that me just returning to my old pattern or would I never have had grey over the top anyway? Yeah. Well, I'm going to work with that now myself and I will show you what happens when I've got to a different yeah you see I'm, I'm liking this I'm saying I'm going to show you what happens afterwards but I'm actually liking that new totally different view of all those bright colors almost seen through the gray haze but I'm going to stop and photograph this before I change it massively and then I'm just going to carry on and save all this grey paint and put it into a another tub because there's so much paint here I don't want to waste that and I don't have any of the canvases but again the point is no fear of judgment and trying new things with a a light heart and a curiosity and because you just don't know the magic that is going to come out you really don't so there will no doubt be a part four when this painting is finished and you'll be able to look back and go well that's not what I expected and I will be able to say the same but this has been oh my goodness what a journey to get to this point of just reducing this to something so unnatural for me that is fantastic and I must be very careful not to put my hand through my hair <laughs> that's going to take a long time to come out right I need to get a jar for the grey paint and go and play and have some fun and if you have a defensive reaction or a negative reaction to anybody's judgment or lack of judgment about your work, just ask yourself where that's coming from, what that's about, and have the courage to then step back and look at yourself with a bit of perspective and say, okay, 
So what am I, what positive thing can I take from this negative reaction? And for me, it was, you know what? I know what I'm doing with landscapes. I've done hundreds of landscapes. So let's see what I can do when I'm really pushed and I have no language for what's happening. There we go. Right, now don't turn off the camera with this hand, Charlotte. Okay, thank you so much. Have a play. Have fun. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks a million. Oh, you're going to get to look at that mess without me in the way. Um, oh, that is exciting. Oh, she says as she falls off the, the chair. Yeah. Oh, it actually doesn't look too bad from up here. Yeah, you get to see all the different pinks. There's definite some form of landscape happening. <laughs> Perhaps I just need to whitewash it, just as Pete said. Anyway, thanks a million. See you soon. Bye.